Smart City brings you this workshop in support of the Canadian Mental Health Association. The CMHA provides advocacy, programs, and resources that help to prevent mental health problems and illnesses, support recovery and resilience, and enable all Canadians to flourish and thrive. Ride Don't Hide is the CMHA's annual fundraiser and raises money for all of their local programming. This year, their goal is to raise $70,000. Making art is great for mental health, and if you agree, please consider donating today. Hey everybody, this is Sarah from Art City, and today I wanted to talk about the idea of making a drawing journal. So this is kind of like a diary, except instead of writing, you sketch. And of course, you could write as well. You, I think that combining the two is really great. One classic way of tracking the passage of time would be to draw something, the same thing, each day or on a regular basis and watch how it changes. So an example of that would be a tree through the seasons where it's just buds, then leaves, then autumn. Um, that's something that you could do. I found that in this time of self-quarantine, one of the things that I naturally was drawn to was tracking different special plants that come and go through the course of the season. Uh, and then those things mark the specialness of those times. Some of those grow outdoors. Some of those are, um, well, for example, I'll show you. I received these beautiful flowers for my birthday back in April, and I wanted to commemorate receiving those from my mom. But other things that have appeared in my yard and around my neighborhood are things like lilacs. And this is a very special time of year. I love lilac season, but it only lasts two weeks, I would say the most. So I like to mark those things with those special um, drawings. And that way, as I flip through my drawing journal, I can even try to drum up the smells and other feelings and sensations that I got when I sat and drew that picture. So um, this exact day, something that popped up that is only around for this little period of time is chive blossoms. So that is what we are going to draw today. One way to break it down so that drawing your picture is less intimidating is first focus on shape just by sketching it out with a pencil. Just keep looking at the lines, the curves, and how they relate to one another rather than thinking about the details of the thing you want to draw. Next, think about color. Think about matching the colors you see in front of you with the medium you have, whether that's markers, paint, whatever it is. Try to find the ways to connect with the color in front of you. Lastly, you can add line with a nice black pen or something else that kind of creates definition and detail. Okay, let's take some time and take a look at this chai flower. There are some really beautiful details here, but first, we don't want to worry about the details. I usually start with some color matching, and one thing you want to think about is it's a lot of colors. It's not just one color. It's not just purple. A great example is the time I drew some garlic. Garlic! It's white! It's boring, right? Well, I'll show you. What I ended up with was something that used a lot of browns and purples, a little bit of like navy kind of color and indigo. So you really want to take time and just look. Which sounds obvious, I know. So what kind of colors do you see here? There's pinks as well, there are grays, there's green. So I usually just start pulling out the colors that I think might work. Let's see, that looks like a really nice color match. That, there's some grays, hmm. Green options. What else? Perhaps a touch of pink? Hmm. 
probably want some other green options. There might be a chance to use a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of brown. And maybe even this one. Great. So that's what I'm going to put in my jar. And now we begin. I think the way I want to do this is take this tiny object and zoom into it. First, I'm going to just start with an overall shape. You've got these tiny, tiny little blossoms within the chai flower, but I'm not going to worry too much about how each tiny little petal opens up quite yet. First, I'm just going to take a look at the stem, how it's a little bit more narrow near the edge, and then gets slightly wider as it goes. And then, let's see, we got a couple little dry, wrinkly petals on the outside, the very bottom. And then the overall shape is kind of round. So I'm not worrying so much about the details at the moment. I just kind of want to get an overall impression of what kind of space this takes up. Okay. Now I want to play a bit with color. I really, really like how there's this brighter pink right at the top. So I'm going to just start going for it. I'm going to put some little spiky bits in there and just draw. I'm not worrying about replicating every single detail that's here. I'm just getting an impression of the feel. I see lots of little tiny pink parts sticking out, doing their own thing. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not counting it and worrying about getting the exact number. There's a bit down here, this color. And there's a variety of purple. I think I might move over into the green just to make sure I have that territory marked out down along here. Because you have all these little separate guys connecting and they're quite beautiful. I want to make sure I include lots of that in the drawing.
And then draw a stem. Start with this light green and then I'll probably want to shade it because it looks a little darker along here. And that's really dark compared to what I just drew. That's okay. I think I would maybe add one more kind of green in the middle of this to blend them together. Markers are not known for being great at blending. These, these are just really, really, really basic markers. Nothing fancy, not from an art store or anything. But you can still find an in-between color to blend it together a bit. Let's see, might use okay. Now I'm adding that slightly darker green in there to give a bit of depth and variety to those little green stems. go back let's see I think actually a little tiny bit of gray I don't have a purple that's quite as light as the one I'm seeing in the chive so I'm gonna use gray to give an impression of lighter tones that'll then mix in with the purple starting to take some shape which is nice and I don't mind the gray actually I wasn't sure but it's doing a pretty good job of reflecting the kind of light purple that I was looking for okay let's see now I think I'll just do some little touches I'm seeing I'd like a tiny little bit of brown in here. And then I think I'll go back to this lighter purple. Just make sure I have it peeking through some of these little dark petals. So in a sense, I've sort of, I've got the color impression of this chive flower, but I don't really have those details anymore. That's where the pen will come in afterwards. Okay, once I'm happy with the overall layout of the colors, just adding a few more little spiky edges. Then I'll move into using a black pen. I don't do this all the time, but lately I've been noticing in my art journal, I've been just adding really bold lines, almost a cartoony feel. And I've been enjoying it. Not worrying too much about realism, but more like the feeling of the plant that I'm seeing in front of me. Now, there are these little tiny, tiny, tiny little guys sticking out. So what I might start doing is just drawing the shape 
of these little tiny flowers here and there. And they're not lined up with any of the particular color strokes that I had done with the purple. I just sort of find little patches that feel like they could be those flowers, and then I create those outlines. Okay, I'm gonna do some of these stems as well. I notice the stems are quite straight, so I'm gonna add very straight black lines in there. And then I've got these beautiful little purple tips. Try to make my black lines delicate to enhance the tiny beauty of it. And there's these little tiny clusters of dots that I'm going to add here and there. That I'm seeing as I look more and more that I hadn't noticed actually earlier on. Okay. There you go. Just a general impression of this lovely chai from my garden. One of the most important things for you to remember is that it's not about the final picture. It's about taking some space for yourself, carving out a time to make art on a regular basis. And in this case, it's also a really nice chance to uh, sit and focus on something that you are appreciating in this time and documenting it. Another fun idea, if you're not so much into uh, the botany of, uh, you know, the flora of the world is that you could document the meals that you're making and eating in this time or perhaps friends that you are talking to you could document a whole journal of portraits so I hope you have fun with this idea for a drawing journal and I'll sign off now this is Sarah from Art City there's no wrong way to do it just do it